This is your Weather Extreme video for Monday, December the 26th, the day after Christmas. And wow, wasn't Christmas a warm one? Set new records at Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, uh, Muscle Shoals, Huntsville, Montgomery, uh, and Mobile. So, very warm day. Satellite image this morning shows that we have a good deal of clouds across the state of Alabama this morning. And uh, those clouds, uh, all thanks in part to the increase in moisture that we're seeing, thanks to uh, the cold front that is approaching, but also as the high uh, heads out into the Atlantic from New England, uh, that will increase our southerly flow and dew points will be climbing pretty nicely today and into Tuesday with dew points coming up into the, the uh, lower 60s. In the upper atmosphere, that big storm system is uh, uh, spinning around across the western Great Lakes area, but it is leaving a piece of energy back there in the just off the, the uh, Southern California coast. Uh, so while that one system heads out, it'll drag that front down our way. But drag is the operative word because the front's just not going to have much push to get through the area and will keep us a little bit unsettled for several days. It's fairly nice over the uh, about the eastern half of the country. Uh, much colder this morning over the Rocky Mountains and uh, coming up into the Dakotas, where, of course, that... Uh, system produce blizzard conditions. No blizzard conditions around the southeastern U.S. As a matter of fact, just about every reporting site in the state of Alabama was in the lower 60s um, uh, or even upper 60s, uh, 69 down there at Mobile this morning. And keep in mind, our average highs for this time of year are generally in the 50s, so we're already well above those. Radar not showing a great deal of showers along that front. One of the reasons for that is that while we will have the moisture, the dynamics, the, the uh, good lift is going to be much further to the north and northeast. So it doesn't look like we're going to see a lot in the way of showers. The uh, watch warning map is becoming a little less cluttered, but uh, we now see some uh, of those purples and sort of um, um, off reds, I'm not sure what you call that color, that cranberry color over in New England. Those are winter storm watches, uh, warnings and advisories, and still blizzard uh, warnings, so that uh, very bright red in the Dakotas still in effect uh, for that area over there, but otherwise uh, things settling down a little bit. QPF-wise, uh, we're going to see over the next week uh, to eight days, we're going to see three shots at rain, uh, primarily Tuesday, Thursday, and then again Sunday into Monday of next week. And uh, the five-day forecast, which takes us out to Saturday morning, which would encompass the Tuesday and Thursday rain events, shows that we're not going to see a great deal of rain. And unfortunately, the character of the rain will be showers, so we're not expecting to see a widespread rain. But it looks like probably the Tennessee River Valley could have the highest amounts, generally a half to three-quarters of an inch, and down around our area, more like a quarter to a half inch. Storm Prediction Center is out looking a very uh, narrow sm marginal risk area centered primarily uh, on Arkansas for day one. Day two, uh, we with the front in the area on Tuesday, we do have the possibility to hear a little thunder. And then with the front still in the area, any scattered showers that do develop, or we could have some enough instability for there to be a little thunder. All right, the 06 EGFS model run this morning, and here comes the front. Uh, coming across the Mississippi River, and of course, good southerly flow and uh, the possibility that we might see isolated showers. When you look at the upper air pattern on Tuesday, you can see that the main dynamics are way up uh, along the Great Lakes and over into New England, and then we have that closed low off of the Southern California or Baja uh, area, Baja, California. Uh, we're basically under nearly zonal flow or a slight ridging, and so that's just not going to allow the front to really move very much. So the front is going to kind of sag into our area and then stay here. So it looks like the better chance for rain should come on Tuesday. Uh, but uh, when we get to Wednesday, you can see that the upper flow just doesn't change much, and so we may see uh, an isolated shower or two thanks to that frontal boundary being in the area. Thursday, we begin to see some changes as uh, a uh, nice trough digs into the eastern half of the country, and that's going to uh, allow us to uh, cool down very nicely. It also brings a very fast-moving front down into the area. So once again, I think Thursday is going to be um, a reasonably good chance that we'll see some showers. Unfortunately, again, with the character of showers, we're not going to see a widespread rain event. Uh, so it's going to help, but not really put much of a dent in the drought. 
Friday, we come back under ridging, but uh, we're, we're still under that northwesterly flow as the ridge just stays just to our uh, west. So Friday morning is going to be a really chilly morning as the high at the surface settles in. We get good radiational cooling. So once again, uh, Friday uh, lows probably uh, around 30 degrees, maybe even some uh, uh, 20 values to, uh, for Friday morning and highs in the 50s. It doesn't take long for that to change, though, as we begin to see the effects of that real closed low, that real strong closed low coming into Southern California down there on Saturday over the southwestern United States. And notice the if you follow back from, the say, the Birmingham area, you come back into the, the Southern Pacific. So we're going to be picking up really good fetch of Pacific moisture. We see that still on Sunday as that closed low comes out just south of the Four Corners area. But once again, we're still picking up good Pacific moisture. So it's setting the stage for the possibility of a fairly significant rain event Sunday and Monday of, uh, you know, basically uh, about a week away. This is the 1st of January, so we may enter the uh, new year on a wet note. And uh, by Monday, you can see that that system is weakening but kicking out across the mid-Mississippi River Valley. So that would produce a pretty significant rain event over the southeastern United States and over much of the eastern um, third of the country as well. Now, there are some model differences, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, the big model difference is when you look at the European, the European is actually about 24 hours faster so this is Sunday at 18Z. It's already got the rain coming through Alabama. It's not quite as bullish on the rain. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, just hope or what, but I'm going to put my uh, faith in the GFS for this one. And the, the GFS does indicate the possibility of uh, Cape values in the order of about 1,000 to 1,400 joules per kilogram uh, over the state of Mississippi on uh, Monday. So this also might result in a bit of a severe weather situation. But, you know, we're edging out into voodoo country, so we'll be watching that and looking for uh, signs there. The, uh, another main system or another major uh, closed low comes in from the northern part of the United States on the 5th of January. But notice that ridge over uh, the uh, Bahamas and uh, South Florida and Cuba keeping us basically uh, out of the the flow pattern, and that means another front that might sag into the area but not do much for us. We do see a little bit of broad troughing around the 8th of January, so that looks like a cool down but not a real cold uh, outbreak. So we would get back to may maybe uh, seasonal values. And then by the time we reach the end of the period around the 10th of January, we're back under the ridging, and once again we're seeing some Pacific moisture uh, possibly coming in around the uh, end of the period. That's about 372 hours out. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. Expect to have the next one posted by 7.30 or so on Tuesday morning. And I'll be filling in for James Spann uh, this evening at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock on ABC 3340. Have a great day and Godspeed.